All right, welcome back. Let me turn this down one second. Got the some of the bowl games going on today. Roll Tide. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get started on the F22. Starting with the wings, gonna put the servos in the wings. I'll show you guys kind of the equipment. This is the second one I've built. Um, so hopefully it'll go a little faster. The, um, the hardest part to the wing is the leading edge flap. Uh, just because the clevises that you have to, to connect and it's very, very limited space. Um, taking little bugs. Um, but uh, the other parts in it, it's, even that's not that hard. So um, it's kind of a neat design how they did it. Uh, there's a bell crank system and I'll show you guys this in there that's, um, that works it well off one servo. So, um, so I'll show you guys kind of one wing and then the second wing I won't show, um, just because there's no point in that. So try to think of where to get started. It's hard to get started. I had to bring a lot of stuff out here to the shop because the shop isn't, uh, heated or anything yet. So it's Last Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it was below below zero, and this week, uh, and this weekend, it's damn near 70 degrees. So it feels like spring out here. So, um, so I'm gonna get have a little opportunity to do some work while I got the, the weather and motivation. So motivation is the big thing these days. It kind of sucks when you don't have a a um, shop set up to where you can do everything and go having to go find stop find tools and that just kills it for me so uh, hopefully I can get this done uh, I kinda got a little excited over the new project that I got in to get to it uh, even though I don't have a motor for it um, I can still do everything but the the motor install so when this one's done so anyway so let me show you what's going on here So like I was saying, um, the hardest part to the wing for, to me is um, this leading edge. Oh, that doesn't fit. That's like a gap there. Sits above it. Anyways, the hardest part is, and it's because you you have a little bit of room and this hinge. I'm, it's so stiff, and I was trying to trying to break it loose. Uh, like this wing is really good. The other wing, I think, and I've already mentioned it, that when you flex this, um, you know, it's just, I don't know what, you, what, kind of, what do you want to call that, but that Kevlar hinge or whatever they put in there, you know, it just flexes upon that and then the top part's open. Well, that wing is extremely, um, the bottom section is really stiff. It's like they just put either too much resin, they didn't cut the groove in it like they were supposed to. And it will actually flex this area ahead of the line because nothing's really going to flex here because it's you know there's a there's a bulkhead here, but this is kind of hollow. So what's happening is this is flexing and it's doing like a kind of a ramp shape instead of flexing along the line. And it's already popped some popped some paint off um, because like I mentioned before as well, they don't prime these. I wish they would. I mean. They do such a nice paint job, and then you know to ruin it uh, is kind of uh, annoying. But because especially like the things like the hatches, like on my last one, the paint was literally peeling off around the edges of the hatches uh, and everything like that. Because there's nothing for it to adhere to. They don't even they don't even sand the plastic. You know, rough it up a little bit so the paint will stick to it. So, uh, anyways. Moving on, so the first thing I gotta do is I gotta open this, flex this up, put something in there, and you can kinda see the arm. There's an arm, and then, uh, let me grab a light, see. One thing I noticed about these high bay LED lights uh, that I'll be putting, on, these are actually gonna go on the other side where my truck and trailer are, not in the shop side. I've got a different set for the shop side. The ones with the clear lens on them cause a lot of glare, so. The ones I actually bought won't do that. Uh, yeah, you're not going to see it. But anyway, there's a, a, a traditional kind of like a 
clevis, you know, that you spread apart with a pen, and it goes in those. I don't know why they don't connect them when they're setting these things up, but there's one here and one here. So I got to get those clevises on, um, and then I put a little retainer clip on it, and then I can install the servo. But this, that's kind of the hardest part is this. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'll, I'll, I'll take some pictures if I can, uh, and then I'll show you the servo. The servo. No, it's with all these little bugs. So I'm I'm thinking uh, I, I use these. These are the servos from the, the last one I had. Um, I think this is a 500 ounce servo. I think I'm gonna drop down to uh, a 175, which is like 300 ish and some change, um, because these things only move, you know, that much. Maybe you know, an, like 15 millimeters is what I measure, because I don't want to go like go past that that built-in built-in kind of former you know that one has a very uneven cut piece underneath there so it's like when you open it 15 millimeters at this end there's a huge gap right through here because it's not cut straight just just bad 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 like this one you can see it's nice 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 straight line on the other one it's like in this area right through here it's like it gets cut short so when you open this one to where it meets the edge of the gap and you know there's no gap no gap and then you have like a big gap right here so uh, I'll just have to deal with that because you know it is what it is but okay so, so typical servo I may switch to a, a lower torque servo on this but you get these L brackets uh, L brackets with some screws I might actually use these I'd use some some uh, screws that I had had like these uh, on my last one but I may actually use these because these are nice and they're, they're Allen heads so I'll, I might use these uh, screws into this um, over here you can see it right here there's this there's this ply wood plate that's glued in here and you essentially just the L brackets will will come this way and go forward, so the servo will sit um, like this in here. And because it's really hard to get the L brackets, you know, get the screws and L brackets on this side, I just ran them forward. That way, they're accessed right here. You see, you put your four screws right here to hold the L brackets, and the servo is kind of tucked under here, back this way. So that's what you're looking at, just like that right there. And then it'll connect to this arm, <clears throat> and then there's a bell crank right here, like an L shape. So it kind of goes like this, and then there's a rod that goes forward. So when you push this, the bell crank does this, and it pushes and pulls that. And then it also goes straight down to that end, same thing, another L bracket. So it's kind of a neat little design. I wish they would have put the little lock nuts on these because there's this rod screws into another ball in down here and it just you can kind of see eh, you know, this you know it's nice to have something to kind of lock that lock that nut on there and I might try to just put one on myself because everything else past this area has lock nuts on it so it won't be an issue so I may put a little uh, a little locking I think it's a three millimeter three millimeter nut on there to lock it so to keep it from just coming, you know, shortening or lengthening, lengthening if it can. I don't know, but that's what I'm going to do. So, um, yeah, another long-winded video. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, this, you know, I, I always like to, you know, mention everything that I see with these jets just to kind of give a prospective buyer, you know, kind of what to expect. Um... You know, T1 does a good job. They they sometimes they over engineer things, which causes some stuff to be and then excessively, you know, excessive. It doesn't really need to be, which ends up adding more weight. You know, they they get they're they're super crazy with glues. I mean, there's no reason to feel you know they're just really over excessive with glue and um, use some thicker than needed in some places. But hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, but 
I'd rather it be a little beefier and a little heavier than flimsy and exploding in, 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 in the air. And This is a really good flying jet and hopefully it's the last one I build uh, because I plan on keeping this one for a while. So I always do that. I always plan on keeping my jets until they get usually get damaged or something and I just don't have the ability to repair them and paint them and make them look good again so I usually sell them at that point. But anyways, so I'm going to get this uh, put together. I'll, sh I'll take some pictures of it, how it goes together with the, the hardware and, and then I'll do another video you know, once once it's installed and, and, and things like that. So, so I'm not sitting here trying to work on stuff while the camera's just rolling. That's just pointless. So you guys take it easy and I'll get to it.